Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie The Three Stooges, released in the year 2012. The movie begins at the Sisters of Mercy Orphanage. A group of children is playing football using a soda can until Sister Mary Mengele orders them to go inside. The children beg for two extra minutes to settle a tie score, but the cranky sister doesn't allow them. When they're all in, she notices a car blasting music and recklessly driving towards the orphanage. Someone from inside it tosses a gym bag on their front steps. As Sister Mary Mengele opens it, two fingers poke her in the eyes, sending her flying off the steps. The head of the orphanage, Mother Superior, and the other nuns come outside to see three babies inside the bag, namely Mo, Larry, and Curly. The nuns are immediately smitten by their cuteness and argue over who gets to spend time with them. Cut to 10 years later, the boys are so mischievous that the nuns argue to avoid being assigned to take care of them. They cause trouble every time they get the chance. Currently, they're attempting to remove a tooth out of Sister Mary Mengele's mouth after strapping her to a table. When the nuns start resigning from their posts because of the troublemakers, Mother Superior has to take extreme measures to send the boys away. She hides all other orphans in hopes that an adopting couple will take at least one of the boys out of the orphanage. A couple named Mr. and Mrs. Harder arrive and meet the three of them. The guys say bizarre things to impress them until a tiny adorable kid named Teddy comes in. After getting a look at all of them, they make the decision to adopt Mo. Although happy about finally having parents, he's sad that he'll never get to meet Larry and Curly again. On the way to his new home, Mo already starts to miss his friends. When the couple allows him to ask for anything as a present, he asks them to adopt Larry and Curly. The couple feels bad that they separated three childhood best friends. Hence, they go back to the orphanage, return Mo, and take Teddy home instead. Mo is not happy about being exchanged. It is now 25 years later. Mo, Larry, and Curly still live in the orphanage and work as handymen. They are not any less mischievous than they were in childhood. For several days now, the nuns have been telling them to fix the church's bell, but the guys are always slacking off. Sister Mary Mengele hates all of their guts and would have kicked them out as soon as they turned 18 if she was in charge. But Mother Superior still believes that the guys have potential. The orphanage also holds a kid named Pease and his sick friend, Murph. They have a friendship like no other and want to make a living like the trio when they grow up. One day, the nuns are visited by a priest named Ratliff, who has come to relay important information. It turns out that the orphanage is in massive debt and at risk of being shut down. Meanwhile, while trying to fix the church bell, the guys do more harm than good. Larry reads the Do Not Remove tag in the bell as Donut Remover and causes it to fall on Sister Mary Mengele. While trying to help, they only fall on top of her and injure her even more. The group is then told about the debt of $830,000 that they will have to pay by the end of the month if they want to save the orphanage. If not, the sisters will be appointed to the other diocese and the children will be sent to foster homes. To stop their precious home from being destroyed, the trio vows to get the money within the next 30 days. They prepare to go out into the real world for the first time in their lives. Although the nuns had always wished for this day, they're worried that the boys will be eaten alive by the harsh world outside. Mother Superior, however, is confident that God will guide them to their destination. The trio wishes everyone farewell and rides off on a bike made for three. The ride is not graceful, but the nuns hope that the guys will be successful. The three reach the city and look for work by advertising that they need $830,000. Somewhere else, an egocentric rich woman, Lydia, and her boyfriend, Mac, are planning to kill Lydia's husband. They want to gain his property after his death and are actively looking for people who can finish the job. To their fortune, they find the trio and instantly recognize that the group is dumb. To trick them into killing her husband, Lydia claims that Mac is her husband who wants to be suffocated in his sleep since he doesn't want to die from terminal cancer. This way, the group will be killing him at his wish, so it won't be considered murder. The couple had planned to switch Mac and Lydia's husband, but the guys are too impatient for the money. They push Mac in front of a bus that sends him flying before he's tossed by a sweeper vehicle, jumped on by a girl with a pogo stick, 
and finally shot in the leg with an arrow. Seeing that their plan backfired, Lydia leaves, but the guys follow her, asking her for money in turn for their services. It turned out that Max survived the incident earlier and is in a hospital. When Lydia refuses to pay, the trio makes it their mission to end his life once and for all. At the hospital, the visiting hours are over, so the guys disguise themselves as a doctor and nurses to look for Mac. Initially, the group is mistaken for actual staff and is taken to a nursery. But the place soon turns into chaos when they get peed on by several babies. Following that, they run into Mac, who's in a full-body cast. Before they can kill him, Mac claims that the bus accident somehow ended his terminal disease. Hence, he doesn't want to die now. The group is back to square one when they meet their old friend Teddy, the orphan who was adopted instead of Mo. It turns out that he has turned into a lawyer after taking his late mother's millions of dollars worth of inheritance. Mo sees the kind of life he missed and is disappointed. Hence, when Teddy invites them to live in his mansion, he refuses to come. The other guys are disappointed because Teddy could have helped them with money, but Mo remains adamant about his decision. In the following scene, it's revealed that Lydia is actually Teddy's wife, and the person the trio was supposed to kill was Teddy. She finds out that they're his friend through a picture and is terrified that they will reveal her plan to Teddy. As the next resort to earn money, Mo, Larry, and Curly raise fish on a golf course, watering them like crops. The plan clearly fails when the fish die and they're chased away by the golfers. Next, they end up in a building, but don't notice that it's the stage of an auditorium. The three get into a fight because Larry and Curly think Mo is putting his pride before the kids of the orphanage. As usual, Mo pokes their eyes, bops their heads, and assaults them in a playful way. After Larry and Curly leave angrily, Mo finds out that an audience had been watching them all along. Because of his unique personality, he's given a spot in a reality show. For the next few days, Larry and Curly try starting several business ventures, all of which fail miserably. Then, one day, they go to the zoo and devour a fish caught from the polar bear tank. Lydia and Mac are worried that the trio will get them caught. They plan to kill Larry and Curly in the zoo, but unfortunately for Mac, he's stuck in a lion cage. Seeing that the animal is chained, Mac taunts and smacks it. Somewhere nearby, Larry and Curly accidentally throw a peanut into a dolphin's blowhole. They help the mammal by squeezing it and the peanut launches out of the hole, hitting the lion in the groin. It furiously frees itself from the chain and attacks Mac. As a result, he can do no harm to the duo. In the meantime, Mo becomes a star celebrity in a reality show called The Jersey Shore. The contestants become the victim of his eye-poking and head-bobbing habits, which in turn skyrockets the show's ratings. Then, we see Larry and Curly meet Teddy's father, Mr. Harder. They ask him for the money to save the orphanage, but he bluntly refuses to help. In the encounter, the duo finds out that the reason Mo was not adopted was because he wanted Larry and Curly to come with him. The two regret calling Mo selfish. Before leaving, they also notice a picture of Lydia, Teddy, and Mac and discover that Teddy is the husband they were supposed to kill. To look for Mo, they return to the orphanage, which is almost empty. The remaining nuns reveal that Murph is really sick and can't go to a hospital because they have no medical insurance. Sister Mary Mengele puts the blame on the group since the hundreds of mistakes they made over the years caused them a lot of money. Larry and Curly cannot stand the thought of them being the reason for Murph's sufferings. After returning to the city, Larry and Curly find out about the Jersey Shore show. They barge into the cast complaining to the producers about Mo. The friends reunite and hug, having missed each other. Larry and Curly tell Mo about Lydia's plan to murder Teddy, and they make it their mission to stop the plot. Following that, the trio barge into Lydia and Teddy's wedding anniversary party. At the same party, Lydia and Mac have planned to end Teddy's life once and for all. But because of the group, the party turns chaotic, making the job difficult for the antagonists. Before Lydia can stop them, they find Teddy in his room still in his pajamas and high from the pills she had given him. Mac points his gun at him, seeing that the secret is about to be revealed. Just then, Mr. Harder comes in and the guys breathe a sigh of relief. That is, until he also pulls a gun, revealing that he is the mastermind behind the plan. He and Lydia together want to kill Teddy to get their hands on his property. 
Mr. Harder had married his wife for money, but she left everything to Teddy after her death. Hence, he wants his money back and feels no love for the kid he raised. He brings them to a car, driving them to a secluded place at gunpoint. But Curly brings out his pet rat, freaking everyone out and causing the car to drive into a lake. They eventually manage to survive the crash, but after that, Lydia, Mac, and Harder are arrested. The trio asks for Teddy's help to save the orphanage, but he refuses, saying that he resents the nuns for selling him to someone like Mr. Harder. In the next scene, the group goes back to the orphanage that has now closed. But then, it's revealed that a new building has been constructed nearby that serves as both an orphanage and a spa. The nuns relax by a large swimming pool, except Sister Bernice, who is now a lifeguard. Everyone welcomes the trio back home, disclosing that the orphanage was saved and renovated with the money that Mo made from Jersey Shore. The executive of the show offers the group and the nuns a spot in their new show, Nuns vs. Nitwits. Murph is also in good condition, having been treated for the metal poisoning she had. Lastly, Teddy and his new fiance arrive at the orphanage and adopt Murph and her best friend, Pease. Curly leans on a raised diving board, knocking Sister Mary Mengele into the pool and continuing the never-ending torture they put on her. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.